In the last year here on YouTube, I've posted 114 total videos. 26 of those were long form videos and the rest of the 92 were short form videos. So here's what I've learned. So this video obviously is a little different than the tech unboxing, the guides, the reviews I normally make. And the reason I wanted to make this video was number one, to have a video of a one year recap of my time on YouTube so I can look back over the years at where I came from starting to where I am today. And number two, helping anyone who's just getting started, who hasn't started yet, or maybe someone who's in the same size boat as me, maybe a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit bigger, to maybe give you a little extra motivation, insights, challenges that I've had to overcome to get where I'm at today. So really just to be helpful and also create just a chapter in my time on YouTube. So the way this video is gonna be broken out, really just four areas I wanted to talk on. I don't wanna make it too long since it's just a review of one year on YouTube is why I chose tech, how I got started with the tech channel. Number two is challenges, obstacles I've had to overcome, maintaining motivation, things like that, getting discouraged. Number three, working with brand deals, finding products, tech to review, getting sponsored deals, how you kind of navigate those, how you get them, how you find them, where they come from. And number three or four is just where my channel is going to go, having learned what I have in this last year to applying that to the future. So with that being said, why tech? Why make a tech channel? How to get started in tech? And for me, quite simply, that's because I love tech. I've always loved tech. I wanted to make a tech channel. So I had really two options. It was going to be tech or automotive. And that really comes from my, my hobbies in tech. As you can tell, I have a lot of stuff sitting around and I always enjoy kind of digging into it, getting the latest and greatest, trying out new features, messing around with stuff. So that's where that inspiration came from. And I figured a tech channel would be a lot easier to get products to review since I already had dozens laying around the house versus I don't have 30 cars sitting in my garage. So that's kind of how I decided on tech. But the very first video I ever posted on YouTube wasn't even on this channel. It was actually another channel I made under my name, Justin Miller. And that was kind of the motivation I had needed to get started on, on YouTube. I had a friend that was doing it with me and that was kind of the push I needed. And I, I kind of want to break that down first of all. So if anyone's out there, I had this big wall built up of how I, I couldn't make a YouTube video because I was going to be shamed or shunned. My family would disband me. People would hate me. They would show up to my doorstep the next day. They would throw rocks at me, whatever it might be. I just was so terrified of making my very first video that it, it held me back for years. And that's why I have this camera sitting on my desk. This is a reminder to me every day of the biggest challenge I had to overcome in YouTube was that I bought this camera in 2019. This was a Canon G7X. I spent hundreds, I think it was like seven or $800 on this camera with the sole purpose of if I buy this, it'll be enough of a sunk cost for me that I put money into this that I will create a YouTube channel. I'll make YouTube videos with this camera in 2019. That was when I was going all in. I committed myself. I bought it. I told my wife this was going to happen. I'm buying this camera. So I bought it. It showed up in the mail. I think it was like August or September of 2019. And guess what? Not a single YouTube video was made with this camera until 2023. So it sat around, I recorded videos of my dogs, I took pictures of my dogs, I recorded myself, I took this on off-road trips, all sorts of stuff. But none of these videos ever made it to YouTube. So one of the biggest things is for what I see a lot of creators is that, oh, I don't have the right equipment. I don't have the right microphone. When I have the right camera, when I have the right speakers, when I have the right lights, I'll make my first video. But the honest reality is that a lot of times that's not going to be enough. And it's just that you need to make your very first video to ever get started. And the very first video for me was shot on an iPhone on a $20 Amazon tripod facing a window in my, in my living room on this channel. Otherwise it was me in my kitchen I'll share this video actually, the magic mist one. My very first video that I ever made was me mixing like soap in a bottle, pretending it was a magic spray, spraying it on my counter and posting it to, to YouTube shorts. I don't remember how many likes I even got on that video. And that's how insignificant the very first video you ever make is going to be. I, I know that it didn't get a lot. I think it was a couple hundred views, if that. Um, I don't think I got any new subscribers. I got maybe one or two comments. It might have been from family and maybe like 20 likes. I don't know where it's at today, but like I said, I'll pop it up so you guys can look at it if you want to watch and make fun of me. That's fine today because I don't really care. And I did that for about two months on this other channel. I made other content that really wasn't at my core what I wanted to make. It was these little comedy skits, but I was having fun with it because I had finally broken down that big wall of I'm going to make YouTube videos and I finally did it. And yeah, so after a couple months, I made this tech channel because I, I was ready for it. I knew I wanted to make it. And the very first video I made was a docking station review. And I, I had this docking station for two years and I liked it so much. I wanted to share it with everybody because it helped me overcome one of the biggest issues I had with my MacBook at the time when that was, you could not run dual monitors on an M2 Air. Um, and this doc let you do that. So that's what I shared. And it's actually the second best video I have on this channel today. So 
Don't let anyone tell you your first video is gonna be terrible. If it's truly what you wanna make, it could blow up. That one video also led to getting three other brand deals from companies that sent me docking stations to review. So we'll get into that next year. But one of the, the kind of ties into the next area here, the biggest challenges, obstacles you have to overcome is that very first video, getting that one out there. Everything is gonna come, come tumbling down after that. No one's gonna hate you. My family still loves me. They still talk to me. My friends still talk to me. No one showed up at my doorstep. I didn't get hate mail. And I woke up the next morning just like nothing happened. So uh, once you get that out of the way, life is pretty good once you, you break down that first barrier. And uh, really, a couple, only, a couple hundred people are gonna watch it that you really don't know yet because you have no subscriber base. So... Once you get that out of the way, the next area becomes chasing a pursuit of perfection or feeling like your videos aren't good enough. You're gonna start noticing other channels in the same niche you're in that do significantly better, especially in there are a lot of niches. You're gonna have channels that are in the millions of subscribers. Like in my niche, you can look at MKBHD, you can look at Unbox Therapy, you can look at Your Average Consumer, iJustine, or even in the automotive space, the two I follow and watch a lot are Doug DeMiro and The Stradman, and they're very successful. But if you go back and look at a lot of their first videos, they, they weren't much different than what you or I could create today. They're, they're just someone with a passion, sharing that with the camera, posting it to YouTube and having fun. And that's the biggest thing is I'm comparing myself, I started comparing myself to where they're at today, trying to incorporate that into videos and it just wouldn't, was not possible. I don't have a production studio, I don't have a big budget, I don't have the backing to create what they make. And, and even just seeing other channels at 20,000, 30,000 30, subscribers, uh, it's really easy to get caught up in my, my video is not going to be good enough. And it's funny enough that the biggest kind of tier where I was trying to catch up to MKBHD, he had a master class that I had bought, uh, that I had subscribed to and bought because I wanted to make better videos. I was chasing perfection. And the biggest takeaway I got from him was that he, even he chases perfection. But if your videos are at 85, 90% of the way there, they're good. You know they're good, but they're just not quite perfect. Post them. Post them anyway, because otherwise you're going to spend days, weeks, months chasing this pursuit of perfection that's probably not going to happen, or you're never going to have it 100% where you want it to be. And the only thing that's going to do is hinder you in the long run, because it's never going to get done, or you're going to try and do things that really don't need to happen, and no one's really going to notice. So starting posting those videos. So you can tell on my channel, I posted about 12 videos in two months, and then I started slowing down because I started trying to go up here. I wanted to make my videos up here. So maybe maybe that's just one thing to keep in mind is just just have fun. Continue to have fun with it, what you're doing. And it took me a long time to realize that where I stopped having fun in the middle of my YouTube journey in this last year where it was more of, I need to make this as good as possible. I need to spend countless hours, days researching, doing this and doing that, editing, special effects, sounds. And I started not having fun anymore where I was almost dreading editing the video because I didn't want to. So so don't let yourself get to that point. Uh, I got there. Uh, maybe you will too, but pull yourself back in. Kind of focus on why you created the channel in the first place and then things will kind of be smooth sailing. But now, next I want to talk about, you know, you know brand deals and getting sponsored deals and, and finding companies that want to work with you when you are a smaller channel like myself, under a thousand subscribers. And funny enough, I actually just got a package today. So this is going to be an upcoming unboxing we're going to be doing and it's going to be relevant if you have a laptop. If you are someone who does multitasking, you have a job that requires a little bit of additional screen real estate, maybe that's an idea of what's in that box, but that's one. And funny enough, the very first brand deal I got came after two months. I had posted my 12th video, our 11th video, my 12th video was the brand deal. They wanted to pay me $50 and I was so excited. Someone wanted to pay me money to make a video and they gave me a license to give away for free and I got to keep one. I actually still use a lot of those elements in my stuff today. It was the DaVinci Resolve graphics pack from Toco Graphics. That was my 12th video if you guys want to go look at it. It didn't do that well. I got 500 and some views to this day. So it did not do well, even though I tried to make a really good hook in the beginning of, you know, we're going to give one away, follow along, stay tuned, blah, blah, blah. Um, it wasn't the best video, but I, I was so thrilled that someone wanted to pay me money to, to do something. And that's kind of how I got that. So the biggest advice for that is just make stuff you want to, because like I mentioned, I got three other companies to reach out to me just for the docking station. I had that graphics pack. This desk I'm sitting at now came from FlexiSpot. They wanted to reach out to me because I did a desk video. I've talked about my speakers. I've talked about my monitors, really anything you can get your hands on in your own office, review that. But the only way these brands are going to be able to contact you is if you have an email or something in your channel profile. So make sure you have an email or a way to be contacted. Otherwise, they won't be able to reach you. And don't think they're going to end up in your comments because only one brand ever ended up in my comments. And that was 
um, Soundpeats. They came and said, hey, we want to send you a product to review. Would you be open to reviewing some headphones? So I said yes, because I love headphones and, and stuff. And I was looking for one to compare against my AirPod Pros, which were those ones. So that's kind of how I ended up getting those. But one thing I've always told myself too, is that I'm not going to review products that I wouldn't stand behind, that I wouldn't consider purchasing with my own money. They're always going to be something that I would actually get because I've had, I've had other companies reach out to me about t-shirts and clothing and like oils and things like that, or just totally random stuff that really wouldn't make much sense. So those are kind of things I've set for myself. So if you are having brands reach out to you, I would kind of be cautious on what you want to share with your audience. Make sure it's something you would potentially purchase for yourself. You could stand behind, you would support it. And that's why, you know, I'm going to open this up and do the unboxing. But if it's something that I don't like, or if it doesn't work, I'm not going to post it. I'm going to let the company know it doesn't work. If they work with me, there's going to have, you know, positive relationship back and forth. They send me something different. I would reconsider again, sharing just because the brand was willing to work with me and, and do something different. So that's kind of brand deals, sponsorships, things like that. They'll come to you. Don't worry about that. I don't have to chase anybody down. I don't have a manager doing this stuff for me. And, and now lastly, uh, moving on, where am I going to go from here on out? Where's my channel heading? And simply, it's going to be continuing to do what I'm doing today. It's finding that passion again, getting through that hurdle I had where I was chasing perfection, trying to make things as good as possible. I know nothing's going to be as good as it, it can be. And that's just something I have to deal with and get over is just that I need to continue to get stuff out there that I think is going to be helpful and valuable for users. So as long as I'm sharing the content, as long as I'm providing value, as long as I'm creating something that's going to be helpful for some somebody where they can get some value out of my content. That's, that's good enough for me at the end of the day. Obviously, I want it to be good, but it just doesn't need to be perfect anymore. And then continuing to grow. I still have the goal of 1,000 subscribers. Obviously, if I can hit that, I'm going to be pretty thrilled. And then from there, the next goal is probably going to be 5,000, somewhere in there. Um, but really, the main goal I have now is to continue to have fun, to continue to provide value, to continue to help people who are on the fence of these products, considering these products. And most importantly for me, just to continue recording and really having a good time engaging with my audience, building relationships and connecting with people along the way. So that's really all I have for you guys. If you found this video helpful, um, I'm glad. I'm glad I could maybe help some people out. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to answer anything about how I got started, why I decided, anything else that you feel like wasn't clarified in this video or you would want to know about starting a channel, how I got here in one year. Um, I'm wide open. I'm happy to answer anything. But until then, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Don't be strangers. And if you are curious about what's inside this box, maybe hit that subscribe button because... Um, I think it's going to be good. I do. I do think it's going to be good. A hint is that, it, like, yeah, it's going to go with monitors and it's my, oh, <laughs> it is monitors. I gave it away. There it is. So if you guys are curious about portable monitors, that's going to be in the box. And um, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Here's to a good year next year, the next 365 days. We'll put this past 365 in its own book and um, see you on the next one.